um, as you said, it's, um, it's not easy. Uh, it's a journey that uh, we like embarking on. It's a mission that we have um, on the side of the government to make sure that we catalyze investments in all these sectors that are considered um, highly risky right. uh, by other players. So we find ourselves as um, the only natural fit um, to tackle these risks head on. And so we have been doing um, some great work um, in some of these uh, high risk areas, mm -hmm. mainly agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, where we work with um, uh, smallholder farmers. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it becomes very difficult to think that BRD can reach a smallholder farmer. Right. Uh, but we have uh, different partners. We work with a number of cooperatives that bring together these um, smallholder farmers. Mm -hmm. We work with microfinance institutions to make sure that we can reach uh, the last of the, their members. And so um, it is through those partnerships that we can say that we truly reach um, um, the, the goals that we uh, set ourselves to yes, achieve. To achieve. Yeah. You mentioned high risk areas, of course, uh, or sectors, and, and that definitely, I'm sure you're talking about agricultural sector. I want to read your thoughts as far as how different you're doing this because most banks, other commercial banks, do not see this sector as you know a sector that they can jump in. Only 1% of total credit that was actually uh, spent 2017 went to the agricultural sector. So what sort of message probably are you sending to commercial banks as far as finance and research is concerned? Yeah, uh, when you talk about investing in a country like Rwanda that has 66% uh, of its people dependent on agriculture mm -hmm. for their incomes, then there is no way that you can think of growth uh, without taking into account the 66% of the population. Mm -hmm. So what we do is to make sure that um, our interventions in agriculture are balanced, mm -hmm. but also to make sure that um, although these other financiers think that the agriculture sector is um, highly risky, right. we partner with them to make sure that we overcome those risks, and that's why we are there. And um, if we concentrate on majorly the high-risk areas... You may then not be able to... Uh, no, we actually want to do that, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that the commercial banks can focus on the less risky areas. Uh -huh. So you want to take that burden yes, yes. off from their we, way? We take the burden from, uh, from the commercial banks, mm -hmm. but also make sure that we give them guarantees mm -hmm. such that if they lose money, mm -hmm. they can be able to be compensated. Right. Another sector that you're actually working on is the issue of uh, low-cost housing. Yes. Um, you know, the, recently you had to come out to actually explain uh, a, a certain project that you've come out with as far as, uh, you know, uh, access or availability of low-cost housing is concerned. Uh, there's a project that you out uh, that is actually uh, going to create 1,750 housing units in its first phase. Of course, you're targeting those who are earning 200,000 Rwandan francs and 1.2 million Rwandan francs, and all they need is just you say 10% of, of the value of the houses. Some people claim that this deal looks too good to be true. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, still, I'll go back to the numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, more than 70% of our population is under the age of 35. Right. And um, the other challenge is that when our students leave colleges, they come to cities. Mm -hmm. Within these cities, um, sometimes they struggle to find employment. When they do, their incomes are much lower um, compared to what the commercial banks need for you to get a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So this is a segment that we target to make sure that uh, we, we put in place these affordable houses right. to target uh, this group. Mm -hmm. uh, the deal looks too good to be true, but um, if you uh, possibly looked at a table that we included in the, in the form that we sent, we have a number of different options uh, for these players, for, for, these, um, for this target group mm -hmm. uh, that earns between 200,000 and 1.2 million um, francs. And we ideally think that this is the group that is traditionally excluded from the formal mortgage market. Mm -hmm. And so what we are wanting from them is um, uh, show us that you have um, savings of up to 5% of the cost of the house that you need. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once uh, we have that proof, then we build the houses. We put you on the list of the buyers. We build the houses within those price ranges. And then at completion, we ask you to have matched um, the required contribution, be 10% or 20%, uh, 
for you to qualify for a mortgage, a long-term mortgage for mm. up to 20 years. Right. So, so, so only 5%? Only if 5% all they need as to a commitment, yeah, as, as as commit a commitment, to. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you spoke of students among this targeted group, and of course the other sector is the education uh, uh, sector, which you actually also support as far as students' loans are concerned. But there's been word that your bank has been struggling to actually recover about 68 billion Rwandan francs in student loans. So how sure are you then that these people are going to be able to pay up this new commitment that you want them to take up? as you answer that issue of the student loans. Yeah, um, the 5% the, the is not coming from students. Mm -hmm. It's coming from people who are newly employed, whose incomes are still low. Uh, of course, you would agree with me that students would not be, ab would not be able to qualify for a mortgage from the commercial bank. Um, so on the side of education, um, you possibly know that uh, traditionally, uh, uh, st uh, students were getting loans from the government mm. uh, since 1980 mm. to finance their education. Mm. And uh, there had never been a program to make sure that the government recovers uh, these loans uh, from beneficiaries. So this started uh, in 2007 right. under the government of Rwanda through uh, the Rwanda Education Board. Mm. And um, because of the challenges that had characterized uh, the way loans were issued, uh, the government did not have a database of uh, beneficiaries to know how much they owed, mm -hmm. to know their addresses, and for them to be able to follow up on them for payment. Right. So that is uh, the challenge that we are still trying to overcome. Mm -hmm. And um, when you said that uh, we are struggling to recover the 68 billion, mm -hmm. it's basically because we cannot locate uh, these beneficiaries mm -hmm. because of insufficient data. Um, through coordinated efforts uh, with the support from the Ministry of Education and other institutions, mm -hmm. we have put together some good data. Of course, we'll not be able to find everyone who benefited, but we believe that we have made some headway. Um, 